Good morning. I saw Connie and Kim and everybody are here. Uh, Victoria's on. Welcome, welcome. It's just after 1030. We're here in the chapel at Genesis. Uh, and welcome to worship. We encourage you to be present. Uh, we know this is not normal. Uh, we don't pretend like it is. And so we're, we're looking for uh, God and God's presence here with us, even in the unusual. So welcome. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer, and then I'll uh, give us a few announcements. Let's pray. God, we thank you for uh, being present to us and with us wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves. Uh, God, we ask that you would bring comfort and healing to uh, every person, uh, every person on this planet, Lord, that are struggling uh, through, through illness, but also just through fear and through uncertainty. Uh, and so, God, we, we ask that you would help center us uh, in worship, that you would uh, make yourself known to us today through music, through prayer, through scripture, uh, that out of all the uncertainty, that you would remain what we can ground ourselves on. So God, we ask that you would quiet our hearts, open our ears, um, and, and still us in your presence this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said, uh, this time is not normal, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so a few things that are still happening here at Genesis. Uh, we're still following guidelines of no gatherings, no small groups or, or services uh, for this time. Uh, we'll reevaluate that at the end of the week when the 15 days expires. That may continue, it may not. We're, we're not sure. We're waiting for some more info and for more guidance from others. Uh, in that time, we want to encourage you to continue supporting the ministries of this church, these new ministries of online uh, live feeds and whatnot. Uh, the, the ministry team here is hard at work to make sure that things are still happening and still going on, and we continue to try to reach out to you all. Uh, so if you'd like to give, there's a link in the description, but there are four ways really you could give online. You could text to give. Um, you could drop off a check in person, and this is the fun part. I forgot to bring my prop, but <laughs> we have uh, a, a new supply of toilet paper here at the church, and so Pastor Jim has agreed to it. If you drop off a gift, a tithe, an offering, you will get a free, <laughs> F-R-E-E, -E, free roll of toilet paper. That's, that's our deal, our gift to you. Amen. Amen. Um, so like, this, like I said, we want to stay in touch. We want to stay connected with you all. So be on the lookout for more uh, updates and information, our website, our news and notes. Uh, if you're not receiving those emails, uh, write a note in the comments and we'll get it out to you. Um, we want to make sure we stay in touch. Uh, also this morning, if you uh, have a specific prayer request that you'd like us to pray for, uh, message us as the church if you'd like it to be a little more private or you can write it there in the comments below. Uh, to start this morning, uh, we're going to sing in a hymn. Please join me. We're going to sing three verses of My Hope is Built. Stand before the throne on Christ. 
Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Amen. Thank you, Robin. Good morning. I am Jim Clerg. I'm senior pastor here at Genesis, and I would like to send you my greetings wherever you might be watching us. Uh, we are glad that you are here. As Eddie said, these are uh, unique times, interesting times, um, difficult times. Uh, but we know that God does some of his most amazing work uh, in interesting and difficult times. So we're glad you're with us, and we know that uh, God's Spirit is binds us together it is God's spirit that fills us and so we pray that this is a time of reflection that, that you can center your hearts your minds and focus on on God it is in these times that it pushes us closer together and, and closer to God so I'm going to offer some prayers as we continue in our service um, Eddie, did you have any requests? Okay, um, you are welcome to send in requests, and we can lift those up at the end of the service. Uh, but as we continue in our worship, and I pray this is a time of peace and comfort, reassurance, um, that you know even in the midst of these times, especially in the midst of these times, God is with us, God is in control, and we can trust Him in all things. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be in each household and with each family. Uh, Lord, you know each need specific to their families. So Lord, we just pray that you would hear the cries of our hearts as we lift them up uh, virtually to, in this worship to, together in one mind, one heart, one accord. Lord, we pray for peace, we pray for comfort. We pray for provision, knowing that you are the God of the universe. And Lord, that we can put our full weight on all of your promises. So Lord, your word tells us that you give us peace that passes understanding. And so Lord, there's a lot of things that we don't understand right now. And so Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray in this time and, and beyond this time, we pray for your presence, <clears throat> that your presence would be felt as we come and we gather together, we worship you uh, in one heart, one mind, one accord. So Lord, I pray that as we go through this service, that each person listening, each person watching, uh, Lord, that you would give them what they need. Lord, you know uh, what our needs are, and so, Lord, I pray that uh, you would speak to each one of us uh, here this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing because I'm happy 
making a little transition here you'll have to bear with us we are uh, this is kind of our first rodeo in this and I want to compliment Eddie Eddie has been carrying us he's been the IT guy the preacher guy um, and so he's just done a remarkable job um, as we go through this we have decided uh, we have been doing podcast Eddie and I together and so we decided that we've had such great feedback on that that we are going to do this morning in the same fashion, only uh, with video this time. Um, and I don't know if those of you, some of you probably have not heard the podcast, but Eddie and I were talking about how much we complement each other in our theology and our conversation, and we go together. So um, I suggested that we're so instead of Pastor Eddie and Pastor Jim, we should just be Pastor Jetty. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I Team think Jetty. That, I think that has a Team Jetty. I think that <laughs> has a ring to it. So the message today is going to be presented by Pastor Jetty. <laughs> yeah, so um the you know, series we were studying before the unnormal happened was the making disciples series and we talked through david we talked through peter through paul and this life of transformation and what it means and how god makes us disciples and uh if you listen to the last podcast we did we called meat and potatoes with the uh the the notion that when you go to the grocery store now what's gone what's completely picked over are all the things you need the meat the produce the potatoes the rice uh, and what's left is the sweets. And uh, we talked a little bit about how a lot of times we, we like the sweeter things, but we need the sustenance. Mm -hmm. And uh, in scriptures, uh, similar. There's a lot of sweet scriptures we like uh, that we turn to, mm -hmm. but there are also some 
difficult scriptures. And today, when we talk about the story of Jacob and how he wrestled with God, it's, a, it's not as sweet of a story. It raises a lot of questions. Um, and so that's what we're going to dig into today. So I'm reading from Genesis chapter 32, uh, starting in verse 22. Jacob got up during the night, took his two wives, his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the Jabbok River's shallow water. He took them and everything that belonged to him, and he helped them cross the river. But Jacob stayed apart by himself, and a man wrestled with him until dawn broke. When the man, capital M, saw that he couldn't defeat Jacob, he grabbed Jacob's thigh and tore a muscle in Jacob's thigh as he wrestled with him. The man, he said, said, let me go because the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. He said to Jacob, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name won't be Jacob any longer, but Israel, because you struggled with God and with men and won. Jacob also asked and said, tell me your name. But he said, why do you ask for my name? And he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, because I've seen God face to face, and my life has been saved. The sun rose as Jacob passed Peniel, limping because of his thigh. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Where are you going? We've already lost Jetty. I think we're having technical difficulties. Hang tight. Give us a moment. Backup plan. All right, we, we good? I think so. All right. I didn't want to start while we were all crooked. <laughs> Wonky. We, got, we have a little delay here. Yeah. All right, we'll finish our introduction. So, um, in all of that reading, we come across this strange story about Jacob wrestling with this man. And it really would be helpful if the Bible capitalized man or when he, big H, talked to Jacob, little h, uh, those things would be helpful because this man that we come across is a divine being that's been interpreted as God himself. This, this story about God wrestling with Jacob uh, and Jacob wrestling back mm-hmm. in the struggle. Uh, and so talking a little bit today about what that wrestling means, what it looks like, and how God can use it to, to transform and change our lives. Yeah. Well, I really like this story. I like the story of Jacob in general, in the sense that, you know, we often approach discipleship like this clean, intellectual, academic pursuit. And really, discipleship, making of a disciple, is a wrestling match, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so much wrestling going on within ourselves, with the world, with other people. And as this story says, even with God, we are wrestling with God. And so there's so much to uh, his life and to his struggle to become the man. And you see a transition, as often you do in Scripture, in the sense that um, there's a new name. Because after this event, um, Jacob is really a new person person um, as often as we are that's part of discipleship that right that's part of fundamental uh, who we are when we are sanctified and justified we become a new creation in Christ we might not change our name but if all is going according to plan in this discipleship uh, we become a new creation in Christ and as a part of that process, the process isn't clean and neat, or at least mine hasn't been. It's not clean. There's a lot of wrestling going on in my head, in my heart, with other people, um, and ultimately with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and, and a lot of times for me, it's, it's wondering what God is up to. <laughs> and, and sometimes the wrestling, you know, Jacob in this instance is about to go back and face what he's been dreading to face yeah. for years. You know, the encounter with his brother Esau after they're falling out. And for me, the it's difficult to see, that's the wrestle, is that uh, I'm not sure, God. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. not sure what you're up to. I don't know what path you, you want, but I'm going to keep searching. I'm going to look for it. Yeah. That, that. Well, and that's that perseverance that, that I'm going to. So even before, he's, he's continuing to not let go, to continue to look. And so we see in his story, backing up in Jacob's story, that uh, he's wrestled with his brother, you know, to yeah. use that term in a broader sense, uh, as far as struggling for birthright. He, there's this wrestling between people about the mother and the father and whose favorite is whose. Uh, you, later on with Laban, uh, he, his father-in-law. So you got family, internal struggles, uh, love struggles between Leah and Rachel. So they're just, we see that in his life, there's all this kind of struggle just with individuals because they seek their own will and seek their advantage. And, and that's just life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're going to come up against people in work, in our community, and struggles in our family. Um, there's going to be some struggles. When, we, when you put people in place um, and in the lives and interact, you interact with people, there's going to be some struggles. Even with social distancing. Even with social distancing, <laughs> right? Well, what's that old saying? Yeah, the, it's probably not a good saying. When pastors are frustrated, they say, the only trouble with church is the people, uh, right? Yeah. Well, now that we have an em empty sanctuary, I take that back. <laughs> I miss you all deeply. Uh, that's not true. Uh, I, we do miss you. Uh, that's what the best thing about church. But in the world, we're going to have struggles right. against other people. Right. That's a natural part of the process. And God will use those struggles if we let him as part of our discipleship. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how do we react when we're wrong? How, when someone comes against us or treat, mistreats us or there's injustice, are we going to lash out the ways in the world like oftentimes we do? Or are we going to, um, in Jacob's past history, are we going to react in a worldly manner, in a manner of the natural person, are we going to rise above that and pray for our enemies, uh, uh, love our enemies, pray for those that persecute us? Are we going to rise above our struggles? And when we reflect on certain situations, we can come back. We can't change other people in these struggles we might have in the world with other people, but we can reflect, how could I have done that differently? And that's where the wrestle comes that's internal, the wrestle. right? So there's always the struggle on, on the surface with other people, but then how we react, how what we choose, what we want to live out as disciples is the internal that's wrestle. Right. Wrestling with ourselves, our own will, our own desires. Man, I'd really like to lay into this person. Yes, exactly. I'd really like to give them a piece of my mind. But then you struggle with it, right? You you. You fight that, right? There's temptations. There's these wills uh, that are humanly wills, uh, human desires. Uh, and then there's the will of God, that God wants something different from us. Well, and I think that takes us to our next level of wrestling. So we have the surface wrestling with other people, and we have struggles with their personalities when our wills clash, and we have that. But ultimately, as you pointed out, when you get to it, when you go down to a deeper level, it's not really wrestling with them, it's wrestling with ourselves. Right. Because we can't control other people. Exactly. We can't have them do what's right, wrong, or otherwise. But we can control, and this is a big part of Jesus' teaching, how we react to that. Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to add to the darkness of this situation? Am I going to get angry? Am I going to retaliate? And, you know, whatever the situation might be. Or am I going to be, contribute to the light? And I'm, am I going to bring kindness, patience, you know, start to hear the fruits of the Spirit? Am I going to interject that? Am I going to contribute to the darkness or am I going to contribute to the light? And so ultimately, that struggle becomes really we're wrestling with ourselves again. Whether it's with people or now like we're living in situations. We yes. don't have control 
over the outbreak. We don't have control over what's going on or I cannot change other people's patterns or in, you know, uh, panic buying or whatnot. What I can control, what God has given us the strength and calls us to control is our own actions, our own hearts. And you think about like the general rules for Wesleyan yeah. Christians is to, you may not be able to control everything else, but you can do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Yeah. Continue that process. Continue well, to wrestle. And this is a minor example, but just a perfect example of the wrestling with your, your, the, the natural person, right? That's part of our wrestling with ourselves. Scripture says, um, you know, that we are a new creation in Christ. We are born of the Spirit. And so now we, the, it is the Spirit that becomes part of us. Uh, there really is no wrestling until we receive the Spirit. Because then that's the wrestling, right? right. The natural person, the worldly desires versus uh, the Spirit and what God calls. Uh, Paul, we can hear the wrestling and the struggle in Paul's voice in Romans when he says, those things I don't want to do, I do, and the things I don't want to do, I, I, or I do want to do, I don't do. Right? Mm-hmm. And you can hear that in, internal struggle. And real life example, right? People have been hoarding toilet paper um, and uh, I've always, yeah, I, was, uh, yeah, I was like, why do we do that? We're creating a problem and kind of got all self-righteous about that. And then I went into Walmart this week. You looked for it. I, well, I looked for it, <laughs> but they hadn't had it. So there wasn't any wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. But I walked in there and they had some. Now the natural gym said, I'm loading up my carts, <laughs> right? And I, that was the natural feeling. But then... The spiritual, the, the, right. the, the, I went in and I was like, nope, I'm grabbing one. Now, I did grab the biggest bundle I could <laughs> get they had, but I only grabbed one. Now, that's, that's kind of uh, very light, but it shows no, you our, our, our instinct jumped in. Mm-hmm. My instinct was, we have toilet paper, I'm going to take it. Mm-hmm. But that, that, and take that and exaggerate it to bigger extremes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that wrestling between that goes on between inside of ourselves. Yeah, the making of a disciple, how God changes us, is rewiring of Re- what our impulses are. Exactly. And and the goal for Christian living, the goal for discipleship, is that we impulse to to Jesus first. Oh, I like <laughs> we that. We impulse to God way first. Look at that, Team Jetty. But, but it's impulse hard. to quote of the day. Impulse to Jesus first. Yeah. That is awesome. That, that we're gonna have T-shirts, um, but it, it, it takes surrender. Yeah. It takes surrender. I in this scripture, what what puzzles right all of us is why would God pick a fight, wrestle with Jacob, right? Why would God just show up and and start to 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 fight and wrestle with him? Uh, and what's what's crazy to me is in verse twenty five when it says when the man feet Jacob is strange what what battle can God not win God if God is all powerful how can he not beat Jacob in this this wrestling match but when you think about it what's the one battle that God can't win what's the one battle thing uh, that wrestle that God can't overpower us on and that is our ability, our willingness to surrender. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that God can't force us to do, that God can't push us to do, that God will, will do some other things, might pull on the thigh muscle, might you know, try to grab our attention other ways, but at the end of the day, it requires our willingness to surrender, to submit. Right. And, and that's really twofold in this story, and that's first submitting, yeah. right? And I like... You know, after this, uh, Jacob walks with a limp, right? Mm-hmm. He, there, there is a wound. Um, but a limp means something that was healed. Maybe not completely, but it was healed. And, boy, I feel spiritually that I, I, I have some limps. I have some scars, but scars are healed wounds, mm-hmm. right? And so... He has to, we have to submit, we have to surrender, but at the same time, we have to persevere. You know, and 
it says that God, God, Jacob prevailed against God. How did that happen? He didn't let go. Mm-hmm. Right? He didn't let go. He didn't overpower God. He didn't overpower uh, the sovereign creator of the universe, right? right like right. you said. But he never let go. And that's what this wrestling is, right? This Everything's trying to knock us off. Ourselves, other people, the world, circumstances, trying to keep us a re- a wired to the, to the world and to the natural person. Um, trying to knock us off. But the key here for me as I read this is Jacob's perseverance. Hmm. He, he says he prevailed. Why? Because he didn't let go. You don't let go. You don't stop trying. When I talk to young Christians or people that are struggling, uh, you know, and, and they might have in their Christian walk let one step back, I say, just don't let one step back become two. Yeah. Right? That's okay. We're going to fall. We're going to struggle. Just like Jacob, he was, he, was a, a, he was kind of a wily guy, right? Manipulator. He was working the system in the world. But he knew there was something to this God, and he wasn't going to let go. And sometimes, for me, uh, the only thing that helps me to hold on is knowing that God's holding on on the other side. There's that hymn that says, Oh, love that won't let me go. Yes. Uh, Sometimes the only thing you, you, that's the light. It's hard to describe, but sometimes the only thing that keeps you in the fight is knowing that God is still pursuing and after right. you that God will always be there yeah. right that and that and that's the thing God's never going to let go yeah. if we get separated from God uh, God didn't let go we let go right um, God's going to be there I mean we see that grace even in the Old Testament you know, a rebellious people that constantly were letting go of God he says, if you return to me, I will return to you. If you grab a hold of me, I'm still going to grab a hold of you. Mm-hmm. And so that is the only way we cannot prevail in our relationship with God as disciples is if we let go of God. And the wrestling is the, the indicator that we're still in it. Yes. Oh, yes. We're yeah. still in it. And the, in the same respect, if you're not wrestling... Yeah. In some part, I mean, we, we, we should, the wrestling should die down at some point if we're growing as a disciple, as we get rewired sure. and our impulses go towards God. Yeah. Um, but there will always be some wrestling. But man, if you're going through a tough time in your life, a struggle, whatever it might be, and boy, you're really wrestling and you're really struggling with it, praise God, because God's working in it. Just don't let go. Mm-hmm. Just don't let go. That is what it is to be a disciple. A common thread through all of these disciples, all of these that we have talked about, um, they've all had struggles in wrestling. Go back to Peter and Paul and these different ones we've talked to. Um, But they just never quit. They never quit. Um, I don't know, would it be a good time to kind of have our closing testimony story? Mm -hmm. So I was told, Eddie, as we talked about never letting go of God, never quitting um, this morning, I remembered a story uh, when my struggles, um, I, many of you know, some don't, that you know, my testimony is I came to the Lord when I was in, in my 20s um, and lived a very worldly life uh, before that, um, and so I... Um, came to the Lord and I began to walk this walk, but I didn't really have anyone discipling me. It was my grandmother's prayers that kind of drew me when I was going through a tough time and searching for something better in life. I remembered my grandma's prayers and I began to pray. And slowly uh, the Lord began to work in my life and to guide me. And I met my wife and she was a godly woman and it, it began to go in the right direction. Uh, the rewiring began, but boy, it had a long way to go. It had a long way to go. And I remember we had just moved from Chicago to Dallas. I was in my mid twenties and I was, I knew there was something to this Christian thing, but I just, 
couldn't grasp it. I couldn't see it. I, w- I was struggling. I was wrestling with it. The old and the new, the rewiring. And I remember one particular night, um, I backslid. I kind of fell back into the world and um, uh, probably was going and doing some things I shouldn't have done with people I shouldn't have been with. It was in my old life. And, and I came, I remember uh, being at home after that and just thinking, why did, why did that happen? You know, it, it was a yeah. step back. Yeah. It was a step back. And boy, I was angry with myself. I, I was alone. And boy, I was having it out with God. And I was having it out with myself. And I just didn't understand. I thought, now that I was a Christian, right. everything was right. going to be perfect. Yeah. Right? And I was going to be perfect. And I was going to be... But I had this back step. And I was like, what does a Christian... I was talking out loud to myself. What does a Christian... Because I understand, I was a very young Christian. What does a Christian do now? And that was my wrestling. And I think it was the Holy Spirit because it came on my heart because I was angry. I was punching the air going, what do I do now? And I remember the Holy Spirit now I can look back because it was just as clear as today. I mean, clear as it was if it happened today. I thought to myself, well, I don't know. I might backslide again. I might lose my wife. I might lose my family. I I might do all, but I'm never, never said these words. I'm never, never, never going to stop trying to be the man you've called me to be. I will never quit. And I feel like as I tell that story, I look back and, and like Peter on the beach, Jesus said, okay, I can work with that. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And if we want to know how we prevail in God, we never let go of God. Close there. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's let's have a prayer, and then I will let Eddie have a closing prayer. If he had any comments that came in or something of that effect, so uh, would you pray with me? Dear Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Lord, I do pray for each person out there and their personal struggles that they might be going through, that they have been going through, maybe for a while. Lord, I pray that they had never stopped wrestling with you, that they never let go. Lord, that you are faithful in all of your promises. Lord, for maybe the new situations that uh, this unique time has created, unique stresses, unique struggles. Lord, I pray for each one of those uh, that we would turn uh, to you, that we would grab a hold of you with all that we are, and Lord, that we would never let go because we know you never let go of us. And so, Lord, we grab on to that truth with all our heart, mind, and soul. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, as Eddie said, um, we have, um, uh, we'll have podcasts throughout the week um, that you can go to our website. We'll post them on Facebook, pass them along to your friends and neighbors, uh, to people in the church. So uh, we kind of do the, the communication through all of our social channels that we have. Um, we will be maybe talking, Troy's in the background here, and we might uh, be offering opportunities for ministry for neighborhood needs. As this continues, it's going to put more stress on people as far as uh, food and maybe supplies for the house. So we definitely want to be a church that is reaching out to those that are struggling. And so we'll share those opportunities uh, with you. Anything else? Well, yeah, I mean, we've had a number of people reach out and ask how they can help. That'll be one. Another that we're trying to do is the congregational phone pals or pen pals yes. that maybe you've seen. So there are a couple of links on the news and notes, and I can post them to our Facebook page. But, uh, you know, folks are kind of stuck, and they weren't planning to be stuck for a while. So we want to encourage them. So if you're willing to make a phone call or send a text, write a note to somebody, uh, or if you would like to receive a phone call or a note. Yes. And uh, I, I think that's important that. to, you know, we're trying to do as much as we can to keep connected through the podcast, through the phone calling.
But please, please, please reach out to us. Um, if you need to talk, if you need us to pray, uh, we can come and do a front porch visit, yeah. not come in. If you're brave enough to come by, we're here throughout the week. Um, so make sure you reach out. And, and I'm going to be working on sending something out to our small groups yes. uh, to give, this, give them some, some tips or some how-tos if they want to try meeting together uh, online or with the phone or whatnot. So we're yeah. trying to equip you all so you can stay in touch with each other as well as us trying to stay in touch with you. Yeah, so. and I want to reiterate earlier what Eddie addressed as far as continue your giving. Um, in, in many ways, your staff is working more now than it was before, even though they worked fully before. Uh, we're trying to uh, do as much as we can and do extra to keep connected to you and keep you connected to others. Uh, so continue to support uh, the ministries of this church as they, in many ways, become even more important um, in these uh, interesting times. Yeah. So, All right, well, so, do you yeah. want to give us a final closing sure. prayer? Sure. Uh, Let's pray. God, we, we, we thank you for showing up and for always holding on to us. Uh, we ask for your strength to help us do the same, to show up for you, uh, to show up for each other, uh, to show up to those we, we do not know that we're going to encounter yet this week. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would fill us up with your spirit, uh, that you would strengthen us so that we could go out into the world and love you and your people all people well, just like you've loved us. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.